guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the uh, philosophy of reading tag that was created by Brandon from Brandon's Bookshelf, who, by the way, is amazing and you should totally check him out. He has an amazing um, series on like poetry and philosophy series every other week um, and I've been really enjoying it. So thank you, uh, Brandon, for creating your wonderful channel and for this amazing tag. So let's get started with the questions. There are 20 of them. I'm going to try and answer all of them so you'll probably get um, a longer video than I usually do, but the questions are so interesting and um, I'm going to try and tag a couple of people that I think would be delighted to participate. So let's get started. Question number one, what's most important, a good character, plot, or message? Well, if it's a thriller, of course, I want there to be a good plot and a plot twist. I don't really care about the characters or the message so much. But if it's a classic, on the other hand, I want there to be like this amazing message, like a beautiful message that stays with me after I've read the book. I mean, no pressure, right? But I, I want that in a classic. And um, or a character um, that I either love or hate, but characters need to be very well drawn in a classic. So it really does uh, depend on the genre. Number two, should one read books about ideas or opinions they disagree with? For sure, if you want to get angry. <laughs> Just kidding. I think reading about ideas that you don't necessarily agree with can open your mind to this other idea because there's maybe like a tiny bit of truth to it. Okay, but that being said, I did mention in one of the videos, uh, there was one book that I um, picked up and it's on my bookshelf and I picked it up and I said, oh, I'm not reading this just based on the synopsis. Let me try and find it so I can see what it was about. Here it is. It's called Hate and I explicitly said I wasn't going to read it. Um, because there was something in it that said other countries provide significant protection for free expression. The United States provides a significantly elevated level of protection, particularly for hateful speech. Nadine Strassen's insightful and eminently readable study on why we protect such speech and why we should continue to do so in an all too rare example, um, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just not sure that we should protect such speech but you know what now like maybe there's something to it it's like now after um answering this question i actually do want to kind of read it number three as tech advances what do you think will be the role of books huh, let's talk about metaverse i think in the future we'll be able to enter worlds that are based on books that we're reading wouldn't that be cool like i of course, we could talk about uh, physical books disappearing and all that, but I wanna, I don't wanna imagine that happening, okay? But I wanna um, be able to um, be immersed in the world of my book, other than, you know, just imagining um, uh, while reading. I wanna, like, I wanna see it. Number four, how important are summaries, review, and art in your book choosing? I think summaries and reviews. Well, I like reading reviews before buying a book, but you have to be careful not um, to find out too much about it so that later when you read it, you're like, oh, I already knew all that. It's like, it's boring. Um, and art definitely plays a big role in my book choosing. I love a good cover. I love my edges, my pretty edges, uh, special editions, graphic novels. All of that. Like, if a graphic novel doesn't have good, I mean, in my opinion, if if the illustrations are not good, if I don't find them nice, I'm not buying the, the graphic novel. So, yeah, very, very important. Five, should one ever skim or scan a book? I mean, yes, you should be able to skim or scan a book and not be shamed for it. Uh, because Especially if you, like, need 
uh, um, one chapter of a book for your for school or for a research paper paper that you're working on, I think it's definitely okay to do it. I remember I was working on an essay and I needed like two or three different books and I only had um, I think a month and I was re I was doing of course I was doing other things so I couldn't read the, the books front to back so I just needed the uh, um, uh, particular chapters and I was really disappointed that I couldn't read the book but sometimes it's not, I mean my essay was really good in the end if I may say so myself but uh, yeah I couldn't finish the books should reading always be enjoyable I mean, that's what reading's for, right? If you're not enjoying it, then what are you doing? Change the book or change your hobby altogether. But of course, I understand that not all parts of a book have to be enjoyable, right? They're like, uh, I remember when I was reading my Russian classics for school, I didn't enjoy one, I remember one particular description and, and went on for like, pages and pages and it was just a guy mowing the lawn i don't remember if it was anna karenina or crime and punishment some like that but yeah so not everything should be enjoyable but most of it yeah seven um is it important to be well read honestly is not I don't think it is like you can always watch documentaries or uh watch movies and be still be knowledgeable you know but i just think it's a shame that you if you don't read it, it you just miss out on so much um like i know you can say for example if you ask somebody oh have you read that book and they're like oh no but i, I i've seen the movie and you're like yeah but you can't sit with us <laughs> not really but you know it, it just uh, there's so much to um, to the reading experience that you can't get from other things. What is your book buying process? I go on booktube and then I go on book goodreads and if those two uh, have said things that I think I'll like in that book then I'm sold. What is your reading process? Well I usually read at night like in the evening when I'm, I'm done with all my activities and I can just relax and dedicate my time to reading. Um, otherwise, I read um, while I do my workouts, like I listen to audiobooks or even uh, while working. I hope my boss is not watching this, but <laughs> if I'm doing something repetitive, I'm definitely listening to an audiobook at the same time. And how do you use what you read? Well, I like keep having a, um, a little notebook with my favorite quotes. Um, like whenever I look back on those quotes, I can always tell what the book is about. And I always feel like I've really read the book if I write down my quotes. Like I've read it, but have I written down the quotes, you know? 11, if you could download a book to your brain, would you still read? Absolutely. I usually don't read books for the information. I, I read for the experience. So even if I could download books to my brain, I, I would still read. But I do understand the idea. Like, then we would avoid um, small talk, the awkward small talk about the weather. And we'd instead talk about Chomsky, <laughs> for example. Or, um, yeah, but there's something so rewarding about asking somebody, oh, have you read that book? And then being like, yes. And you're like, I found my person. So I wouldn't want that to be taken away from me. 12. What are your views on rereading a book? Um, I, re I reread a book just last month, but that's because I really loved it. And I think a book should be like exceptionally good for it to be reread by me. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Like, there's so many books out there and you shouldn't waste your time rereading the same books over and over again. 13. What makes a book good? My criteria is goosebumps, okay? If I get goosebumps, um, the book is good. <laughs> so, my, all my students know that. Like, if uh, they said something right, I get goosebumps. And I show them, like, look. <laughs>
<laughs> and they're happy because they they get they got it right. <laughs> 14. What makes a book bad? No goosebumps, okay? Also, if it doesn't make me feel anything, like you can make me feel bad, and please do, like if you're a book, okay? Um, but if you don't make me feel anything, um, I, then I, I I don't wanna I don't wanna read you. I'm addressing uh, books right now. How do you feel about not finishing a book? Recently, I felt great about not finishing a book, but I didn't used to be like that. I used to think like that I should read a book front to cover, front to cover, front to back. Um, but now I'm more like, you know, my time is precious. Why should I spend it on a book that I don't want to read? So by all means, DNF books. Stain. Should the author's personal life matter at all? It should not. Art is art. I don't care what the author does. Like, I know J.K. Rowling said what she said, but that doesn't make her books um, bad books. I mean, Harry Potter is still very much popular, and it should remain like that, but she should be judged um, based on what she said, not uh, on what she wrote. 17. Do you, sorry, if you could only read one genre for the rest of time, what would it be? This is so hard because I love nonfiction. I love a good romance, historical fiction as well. So, oh, classics. But I pick thriller, okay? Because they just make me want to stay up all night in order to finish them. So yeah, thrillers make me feel things and that is great. 18. Do you ever read a book without knowing anything about it? Yes, and I totally encourage it. Like, the less you know, the better. Because sometimes if you know too much about a book, it, like, completely spoils it for you. 19. What author, genre, series, or culture can you just not get into? Oh my goodness, young adult. I don't know what it is about young adult, but I can read young adult. It's, um, like, I'd rather read a kid's book than young adult. I think that um, kids' books, children's books, are very deep. Like, they can be very profound, and there are all these fairy tales, and um, um, what are these called with the um, animals? Ah, uh, I forgot. Anyway, fables, yeah. There are a lot of fables, and they, they can be very profound, uh, whereas young adult is just I, I, I can't. I can't do young adults. And also fantasy. Fantasy is not my thing. It's like, it's too easy. Like, there's this magical horse, and why not a magical frog as well, and a magical carpet, and just too much for me. Sorry, I'm not t trying to insult anyone, sorry. But I, I personally can't deal with that much imagination. Do you think everyone should read Absolutely. But don't just read what you should read. Read the books that you are you think you might be interested in. Um, I teach um, English as a second language and my students often ask me, what should I read? Like, please recommend a book. And I just tell them, just choose whatever you would choose in your native language and read that thing read it in English, sorry. <laughs> Guys, this was so much fun. I laughed a little too much, so sorry about that, but it was just, um, it was just a lot of fun, okay? And I'm tagging some people in the chat box, in the description box, so um, go ahead and do this tag. Otherwise, please subscribe and like this video, and I will see you very soon. Well, actually, today, today we got a video on a Thursday, which is like a bonus video, and then we'll get a regular one Saturday, uh, for uh, hopefully. So yes, have a good day and see you. Bye!